Would you be willing to eat nothing but meat for the rest of your life? And would it be good for your health? Let's talk about that. How's it going guys? My name's Richie Kerwin and today we're going to talk all about a diet that has been getting a lot of attention on social media over the last few years, the carnivore diet. We're going to talk about what it is, what's the science behind it, and what are the potential health effects. As always, I want to point out that I'm not telling you to follow or not follow this diet. In all my videos, my goal is to help explain some of the science behind different aspects of diet and nutrition, so you don't fall for all the bullshit nutrition misinformation that is filling the internet. My goal is to help you understand how different diets, foods and nutrients affect our health so you can use your own critical thinking to help you make up your mind about what to do with that information. So first off, what even is a carnivore diet? Well, unfortunately, that brings us right to our very first problem. You see, there doesn't seem to be any agreement as to what a carnivore diet is. You might think it's as easy as just eating meat, which makes perfect sense, but it turns out there are a lot of different variations of carnivore. For example, some say that as long as the diet is at least 70% animal products, then it's carnivore. But that's a completely made up number, and many in the carnivore community will disagree and say it has to be 100%. Some people say it's okay to include eggs, some say it's not. Some say you can have dairy products like milk, butter and cheese, whereas some say those foods will mess up the diet. Some say you can drink coffee, some say it's toxic. Some say you can eat fruit, but only some very specific fruits without any real reason why. Whereas some in the carnivore community will tell you that the sugar in fruit will make you gain a load of weight and get fatty liver disease. Even talking about meat, there are variations within carnivore. Some people say you should only eat ruminants, like cows and sheep, because their meat contains less omega-6 fats than non-ruminant animals like pig or chicken. The reasoning is that in the carnivore community, many people believe that omega-6 fats in the diet are inflammatory, although that's not what the scientific evidence says. There's even a version of the carnivore diet called the lion diet, where people only eat beef, salt and water. And that's considered an extremely restrictive form of the diet, even by carnivore standards. In reality, the defining characteristic of carnivore is a major focus on animal foods, especially meat, and avoidance of plant foods, even spices like pepper or garlic. Right, so that's what the carnivore diet is. Now, let's talk about some of the actual health effects that it might be having, both good and bad. Firstly, one of the most mentioned benefits of the carnivore diet is weight loss. Yes, even though the diet can be quite high in fat, a lot of people, at least anecdotally, lose weight. Now, is this because of some magic of eating mostly meat? Not at all. Carnivore helps people eat less energy or calories in two ways. First, if you're eating meat, you're not eating anything else, especially processed foods, which make up more than half the calories in the Western world. Following a strict carnivore diet is a great way to avoid excess calories from foods like ice cream, cookies, cakes, crisps, pies, sweets, pizza. Of course, you could do the same if you decided to cut out a lot of processed food yourself without going on an all-meat diet. The second way is by helping to reduce appetite. We already know that protein is the most satiating macronutrient, meaning it helps us to stay fuller for longer, better than fats and carbs. Meat has a lot of protein and can keep you feeling fuller for much longer than other foods. On top of that, avoiding carbs leads to the body producing ketones for energy. And ketones can help reduce appetite too. So a meat-based diet can help reduce someone's appetite, which means they eat less, which helps them lose weight. If you eat too much meat, you absolutely can still gain weight. And there are many stories in the carnivore community of members with large appetites that have gained weight while on the carnivore diet. Now, this weight loss that happens during the carnivore diet is a big deal. For some people, they may never have been able to lose weight in their life because losing weight is damn hard. The carnivore diet is simple in theory. Just eat meat and maybe some eggs and dairy. Simple advice coupled with the appetite lowering effect of protein and ketones might help some people stick to a diet for the first time in their lives. The only issue is that extreme restriction can often lead to extreme food cravings in some people, and that might not be sustainable for some in the long term. Now, weight loss can have loads of downstream health benefits too. Better glucose control and a lower risk of diabetes, better mobility and less joint pain, which allows people to exercise more, 
reductions in the risk of developing fatty liver disease, and many of the diseases associated with excess body fat. Weight loss can be a powerful tool to improve health in many people and can be achieved in many different ways. But if someone achieves weight loss through carnivore, it's natural for someone to associate the health benefits exclusively with the diet that they followed. One thing worth mentioning about the health effects of carnivore is that there might be the possibility that it may be useful for people with severe food intolerances and autoimmune conditions. There is some anecdotal evidence that people experience improvements in some of their conditions like psoriasis, colitis and other gut issues, and even rheumatoid arthritis. The thing is, there is absolutely no scientific evidence on this whatsoever. But a lot of people seem to report benefits from going carnivore, and that's definitely something that deserves further scientific study. Now, the way carnivore might be beneficial is because in reality, carnivore is a very strict elimination diet. An elimination diet is where you eliminate a lot of different foods that someone might be sensitive to to help ease their symptoms and then slowly reintroduce some of those foods one at a time to see if they have a reaction or if they can tolerate it. Carnivore might in fact be the ultimate elimination diet because of all the foods it eliminates. It's also worth remembering that people with these complex conditions, food intolerances or allergies, are very rare. So that doesn't mean that the carnivore diet is going to be beneficial for the general population that's already healthy. The thing is, elimination diets are supposed to have a reintroduction phase afterwards to help find foods that people can tolerate to increase the variety in their diet. Carnivore doesn't have that reintroductory phase, so people may never learn what foods they can eat again, and they'll be eating meat for the rest of their life. So those were the possible benefits of carnivore. Now, I want to touch on some of the potential problems with the carnivore diet. The diet is very controversial with many people saying it's the worst diet ever and it's worth talking about that to understand why that is. The main issue with carnivore diet is the possible effect on LDL cholesterol. You see, animal products tend to be high in saturated fat and saturated fat causes the level of LDL cholesterol in our blood to get higher. You might ask, why does that matter? Well, we have a huge amount of evidence amassed over almost 100 years of science using multiple different methods that show that high levels of LDL cholesterol over the course of someone's lifetime put them at a much greater risk of heart disease, which is the number one killer globally. Now, there is a common counter-argument in carnivore communities. You'll often hear them say that cholesterol is essential for health, and that is absolutely true but it's no good as an argument here. You see, we do need cholesterol for our cells to function and we die without it. So much so that our bodies produce all the cholesterol that we need. We transport the cholesterol that we need to the cells that need it with LDL particles. When an LDL particle gets to a cell, it binds with an LDL receptor and the cell takes in the cholesterol to use it. Easy, right? The problem is that when we eat a lot of saturated fat, our cells aren't able to produce enough LDL receptors. That means that the cholesterol that should be getting into our cells for use is hanging around in our bloodstream where it's not supposed to be, building up. Over many years, that cholesterol can start to build up in the arteries and form an atherosclerotic plaque that can eventually lead to heart disease. Many people on carnivore diets lose weight, feel great, and see improvements in things like blood sugar, HDL cholesterol and blood triglycerides because they lose so much body fat. And these are all good things. The problem is LDL often goes up. People refuse to think of that as a problem because they're feeling better than before. But it's still a problem because high LDL cholesterol takes decades to cause heart disease. It's a very slow process, but it can lead to a very serious condition that kills more people worldwide than any other disease. Another concern with carnivore is the lack of plant nutrients like fiber or polyphenols. Now, while these aren't necessary for survival, they can have huge benefits for long-term health. For example, higher fiber intakes are associated with lower risks of colon cancer, something that processed meat eaters may have a higher risk of. On top of that, high fruit and vegetable intakes are associated with a lower risk of many other cancers too, including breast and stomach cancer. Now, this doesn't mean that I'm saying that if someone eats carnivore, they're going to get heart disease or cancer. 
but the overwhelming majority of evidence says that if they are increasing their LDL cholesterol and if they're not getting fiber, fruits and vegetables, they have a greater chance of getting heart disease or developing cancer. It's all about risk. I would like there to be more research into carnivore diets. Research is good and helps us understand nutrition science and how food affects us better. But until we have more research, a carnivore diet high in saturated fat and low in whole plant foods is not a sensible science-based dietary approach. As always, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and remember to like and subscribe to the My Protein YouTube channel for more great evidence-based nutrition information.